Okay, I think it's finally time to talk about my sensational and spectacular $300 solo dinner at uh, Joel Rubichon or Joel Rubichon at MGM Grand. Now, I typically don't like the ultra elite, hyper fine dining, whatever you want to call it. You know, when you get to like the single star, two star for sure, and three star Michelin caliber places, um, you know, it's just almost like too over the top. I don't know what half the foods are. I'll have to look them up. I can't pronounce them. Uh, the atmosphere can be kind of stuffy, somewhat pretentious at times. The plates are so small, and conversely, they're also so expensive. So that's not a great combination. However, I am always on the lookout for new, hot, fun, like, gastronomy places, and I finally found one at Joel Rubichon. Now, there are two Joel Rubichon locations at MGM Grand. They're right next to each other. You have the critically acclaimed um, Joel Rubichon, which is where you're going to go for your ultra fancy sit down, traditional, high end, lavish dinner. You know, you're going to have pretty much a prefix menu. It's going to be like your formal dining setting. But the place that I went is next door. And I went there because it's more casual than what's next door. Now, don't get me wrong, it's still ultra fine dining but it is a bit more casual. And the thing that makes it really cool and what makes this concept unique is that the kitchen is the spectacle. It's all about the kitchen. It's not really about the formal dining experience. It's about watching the food being made. As you can see, it's almost like kind of like a mini stadium where all of the chairs are surrounding the kitchen. And I believe that this kitchen is making the dishes both for Joel Rubichon next door and L'Atelier which is this location right here. Now, I could be wrong on that, but I believe that to be true. And there's nothing like watching some of the best chefs in Las Vegas, maybe in the world, making some of the best dishes in Las Vegas, maybe in the world, right in front of you. You can literally watch the dishes that you order go from being put in by your waiter to the chef, watch them make it and get right served in front of you. There's something really unique about that. You don't see it a lot specifically at high-end places like this. I love the open-air kitchen environment. I talk about it a lot. I think it adds a lot of confidence to your meal. I think it adds a lot of transparency to your meal. And when you can sit front and center and watch these culinary geniuses make the, some of the most creative dishes you're gonna find in Las Vegas, it's just really sensational, literally sensational. Okay, so let's get into this meal. The first thing you are met with is a compliment from the chef. It is a penne cotta with a spicy tomato gazpacho. Uh, it's just a set the palate. And also, just to let you know where you are. Like, if you ever get a dish like this, it's a compliment from the chef. You know that you are in a really high-end place and you're typically in for a really good meal. Um, I like the fact that the tomato gazpacho was spicy. It added some kick and it definitely opened up the palate. So I'd be remiss if I did not show you the bread basket that comes out. This is anything but a typical bread basket. It is entirely and authentically French. You get baguettes, you get croissants, and you get brioche. And of course, you get that super thick, rich, handmade creamy butter. Uh, I would say definitely by far the best bread was the croissant. I tore through those. They were unbelievably delicious. So this is my first drink of the night. If there is a bit of a knock on this place, the cocktail menu left a lot to be desired. There were, I think were only a handful of them, but I understand why that is. They're, I think they really want to focus on the culinary experience and the gastronomy and not necessarily the cocktails. Nonetheless, I was hoping for a few more cocktails. I did settle on ordering the last word. I love that name. Uh, it's Bombay gin, green chartreuse, Marciano liquor, and then lime juice. All right, so this is my first dish. I'm going to butcher a couple of these pronunciations. French is not my specialty, quite the opposite. Uh, I believe it's called La Dura. Um, it is Royal Snapper Carpaccio. Just not Snapper Carpaccio, but Royal Snapper Carpaccio with a lemon vinaigrette and poppy seeds. This thing had some kick to it. It was beautiful looking. I love the presentation. The colors were vivid and bold and vibrant. I think this could be in contender for one of the best dishes of the night. It was the perfect way to start my meal. Okay, my second dish of the night was one of the ones I was looking forward to the most, but it's actually, I think, maybe the most underwhelming. Um, it's la carrot or la caro, and it is a carrot and cumin valet with a fresh goat cheese raviolis. Now, the fresh goat cheese raviolis is what sold me on this one, and I really couldn't find them. Am I, am I missing them? Like, I really can't see where they are. Maybe they're atomic, maybe they're miniature, I don't know. But that was what I was looking for the most, and they really couldn't be discerned in the dish. Nonetheless, the presentation was amazing. The way that they slow poured 
that uh, carrot and cumin valet in there was awesome. This dish was rich. It was decadent, but it certainly wasn't my richest of the night. More on that to come. All right, my third dish of the night is lakaye or lakaye. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. It is caramelized quail stuffed with foie gras. So not just quail, which I've been on a quail kick lately, caramelized quail stuffed with foie gras. And then on the side that looks like butter, that's not butter, that is potato puree. That's how rich and thick those potatoes were. Just look at how succulent, thick, and juicy those quail were. They were otherworldly, they were unbelievable, they were amazing, they were fantastic. I just wish that there were more of them. Uh, they were so good, I ate them down to the bone. I ate every last shred, and I maybe even ingested some of that bone as well. They were delicious. So if you think what you saw so far was decadent and indulgent, just wait. The two main entrees are upcoming and they are sinful. I know that they're upcoming, so I wanted to kind of slow things down a little bit, let things settle. Um, There's also an opportunity to order a glass of wine. You're at an exquisite French place, Joel Rubichon. I think it's only fitting to do so. I only drink Pinot Noirs, and I only drink French Pinot Noirs, and they did have one on the menu. Um, it was a 2017. This thing came out bold out of the bottle, which is interesting for a Pinot Noir. But once it settled and aerated, um, it really kind of developed that silky smooth taste and texture that Pinot Noirs are known for. So this dish right here is the most extravagant. It's the most indulgent. It is rich. It's also the most expensive. It's not even on the menu. They called it Le Special. It was off menu. It was special. Uh, it was $45. It was lobster cream sea urchin and caviar topped with gold flake. It was a flavor explosion. It was unbelievable. The sea urchin was so fresh. The caviar was delectable. And of course it was topped with 24 karat gold flake to give it some aesthetics. This dish was indulgent and filling beyond belief. And after I finished it, I really didn't want the last dish that was coming, but I had to order it and you'll see why. And here we are, the piece de la resistance, Lay burger. Now, it looks like these are double stack patties, but they're not. One is a burger patty, and then the other one is a foie gras patty. Look at the size of that foie gras serving on there. That would be like a foie gras serving at a standalone restaurant. You get one of those on each mini burger. I love the presentation with the Joel Rubichon stick holding them together, and then the fries. Oh my God, the fries. They tasted like McDonald's fries on steroids. If you ever wondered how a French restaurant would make McDonald's type fries, Come to Joel Rubichon L'Italier. Uh, they are pretty much the best fries I've ever had in my entire life. So in finale, I had two drinks and I had five dishes. I went the a la carte avenue, but you can do like a chef's dinner or like a prefix dinner if you want. The only thing you didn't see was a $10 Evian. Uh, my subtotal was $223. Tax was like another 18. That puts my subtotal in tax around $241. Um, I tipped another 48 and change putting me at $290 for a pretty spectacular and sensational dinner at Joel Rubichon.